The military outpost is one of the trickiest locations in the entirety of this war of mine. It seems only fair that I start my new series of location tutorials with one on this dangerous location. This video will be split into three parts. The first part will be on the trading exploit that you can perform here, the second will be a tutorial on taking out all the enemies at the outpost, and the final part will just be a tour of the outpost showing all of the places that you'll need certain tools and all of the looting locations. So first we have the trading exploit. As you'll be aware as soon as you enter the location there is a trader here who you can get some good resources from. He particularly wants booze and cigarettes, so if you have any spare then you can trade them away and get some good stuff from him in return. If, however, like me, you don't want to give away anything, there is a way to get all his items for free. There are two looting locations which contain his items. The first is the locked cupboard right behind him. If you bring a lockpick with you, you should be able to wait until he's called away and go and unlock it. I would then suggest walking back as you rarely have enough time to loot it as well on the first attempt. I tried to do this and, well, didn't go well. The best thing to do is to wait until he's called away again and then go and take your pick of all the goodies. The second looting location, however, is a bit more difficult to get to, but contains a lot of the weapons that he will have to trade. This is found under the stairs of the second building. To get to this spot unnoticed, simply climb up the ladder while the trader is away, being careful not to startle the guard at the top. You can then drop down at the back when the soldier who talks to the trader goes back inside and hide in the spot just inside this building. You can then wait for this soldier to leave again and look through the keyhole to the rest of the building. There is one other soldier here who does a loop of the building, walking down the stairs in front of you and then heading through the door to the left. If he is taking too long to walk down, it may be worth hiding again as the first soldier may come back. However, if you get a clear path, the lootable position is below the stairs and contains a lot of the weapons that the trader has. It is worth noting though that you should leave an item in these, as, as long as you haven't taken the final item, they will replenish over time as the soldiers restock their shop. You can then repeat this process on future days. Now we move to the hardest part, clearing the outpost. I would recommend doing this with a pretty strong character, I ran it with Roman to show you how it's done, and I did this in a stealthy way, but you can go full attacking if that is what you prefer. The layout of the soldiers is as follows. In the first small building, we have the trader and the sentry on the tower. We also have the soldier who walks between this first building and the second, the first larger building, and the other soldier who patrols in that larger building, making four here. In between the two buildings we have a fifth soldier walking back and forth, and a sixth soldier who looks over the courtyard. There are two more soldiers patrolling in the back building, making a total of eight. For this run, you'll only need a knife if you're one of the stronger characters, but it may be worth bringing a gun and some armour just in case you get caught, because then you can shoot your way out. The strategy is as follows. Number one, wait for the trader to be called away, and then climb the ladder to take out the first soldier on sentry with a backstab. Number two, head to the back of the roof and wait for the second soldier to head inside to the left. Jump down and follow him, and hide just inside. Eventually, he'll come back out and you can backstab him. Number three, at this point, you can head back to the trader and backstab him, clearing the entire first building. Number four, the patrolling soldier in the first big building will eventually pass the hiding spot by the top of the stairs. Wait there for him and eventually you'll get a backstab. Number 5. Wait in the back room of the first of the bigger buildings. You can wait for the soldier walking between the two to get close. Look out the keyhole to check. You can then make some noise to lure him in while hiding in the spot by the back door. He'll come in, walk in front of you and you can backstab him too. Number 6. Now we're on to the sentry. This is a bit tricky. You need to slowly walk across the courtyard until he shouts at you. You can then run back to the previous hiding spot, making sure to close the door behind you. He will come in, running after you, trying to find you, and he will walk in front of your hiding spot. You can backstab him, leaving you with just two. Number seven. These final two are a bit more random, 
But if you hide upstairs in the back building, the first will pass you by, meaning you can take them out relatively easily. Number eight. There is one soldier left, and you should be able to take him out just by attacking him. However, you can find a hiding spot that lines up with his patrol and just wait. Unfortunately, in my run, I was running out of time, so I went the all-out assault method, and it works. He can't call anyone, and as long as you have got a pretty strong character, you can get rid of him. There are also a few extra tips and tricks for clearing this place, as it won't always go as nicely as you plan. The first of these, sometimes the soldiers will not follow their patrol straight away. For example, the soldier who talks to the trader at the start can sometimes go back to talk to the trader again before returning to the bigger building, so don't necessarily jump after him as soon as he moves. The second tip is that if you alert anybody in the first two buildings, the rest will not come running. The same goes for if you alert anyone in the back building while the front people are still alive. They are two separate instances as long as you don't get caught in the courtyard. Number three, note that there is a window out the back of the first bigger building. There is a hiding spot there that the patrolman does walk past. If you stab him there though, you risk the guy walking in the courtyard to see you through that window and become hostile. The final thing is that if you are spotted just trespassing and no one has seen you commit any crimes, you will have an opportunity to leave. At that point, I would suggest you run because any other bodies that they may find suddenly make your job a lot, a lot harder. It is also worth noting that your good survivors won't get too upset if you kill the people here, as it is questionable to which side they are on. In the runs I have done with it, I've even noticed a few positive shifts, even though they are quite small, in morale, as distrust of soldiers can be quite high. So, that's the exploits and how to kill everyone. That just leaves the tour. We have covered it a lot already, however I will put a full tour here just to avoid any confusion. Take it away, tour guide Andy. So welcome! We have a lovely property to show you all today. It's separated across three buildings and a tower, and has ample storage space for all the things you could possibly want to steal, I mean, store. Unfortunately, it seems the previous tenants are begrudgingly sticking around. We sent an evict around last night, but they seem to have run out of time and left one behind. Don't worry though, if you could remove them, that would be great. This allows us to show off the first of the three buildings though, a lovely two-room welcome annex. The front room has open air access and provides a good spot for a possible business venture, and the back room has a nice strong cupboard for locking up valuables. You can get stuck though, so make sure you bring a crowbar to get it open. The material piles on the roof also come with the property, and can be accessed by the ladder to the front tower. This provides lovely views across the entire scenic city of Pogoran. The lovely flashes of nighttime are spectacular this time of year. Now, the first of the main buildings is just a short walk through a lovely courtyard. It has a welcome hallway which leads into another storage area, which has a storage space underneath the stairs. This is a lovely nook for all those valuable items you couldn't find in that front cupboard. Upstairs is the first of the bathrooms, with a great many toilets for when you have all your friends around. Unfortunately, the previous tenants weren't a big fan, so you may need to saw your way in, but I'm sure that won't be a problem. When you need to go, you've got to go after all. A small supply of painkillers come with the property here too, feel free to use those to your heart's content. The rest of this building features a spacious bedroom and a small office space. There were eight previous tenants, so plenty of sleeping space, but if you do find any letters addressed to the old tenants, especially depicting war crimes or distressing scenes, uh, please do return them to us for destruction. We now come to the larger courtyard and the lovely tower structure that was built by the previous tenants. Spanning three floors above ground and a basement, it is quite impressive. If you find any spare parts and materials though, feel free to use them yourself for your next project. Leave your mark on this place if you will. And now the final building of this extravagant property. We start with an entrance hallway before we enter the main dining room of the property. Very spacious, and even comes with a fully functioning TV. Although there's nothing worth watching on nowadays, is there? Haha. <laughs> we now move on to the basement. This is incredibly secure, and I believe the previous tenants used it as an armory. If you are lucky, they may have left behind some of what they stored here. As I said though, it is very secure, and I appear to have run out of saw- I mean keys to get through. 
Anyway, we'll have to organise a viewing on another day to finish this off, but let's have a quick look upstairs before we leave today. The first floor houses a small but well-equipped kitchen, and I check for any food left in the fridge, by the way. I'm not sure uh, how long that's been there. Next door, you have an empty room. Could be perfect for an office, or a workshop, or perhaps a nursery. Anyway, upstairs on the top floor, there is another bedroom and a storage room come study. Any game. Any materials you find are yours to do with as you please. You may need to access the roof for damages though, so you can access it from here as well. Now that is all for today, but do come back tomorrow so we can explore the remainder of that delightful basement. Ah, oh, great, you've come back. I knew you couldn't tear yourself away from this steal of a property. The basement continues down three levels below ground and is therefore incredibly secure. And it seems as if there are lots of broken weapons down here that just the previous tenants didn't need anymore. Feel free to take them and mend them, just don't use them on me. <laughs> but yes, as you can see, this property is a steal. If you would like it, I would suggest you get in quickly before everything is snapped up. If you decide against, come back and see me. I'm sure I can give you the best deals and the best tours of all the locations around Hogland. And that is it for this tutorial. Let me know if you think I've missed anything, and I will address it in the comments below. Besides that, have a great day, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Ta-ra!